I want to jump into the scriptures today. It is Baptism Sunday. I felt to align a word with what God may want to do through baptism. And so let's turn to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. The series is called um, The Things He Said. The Things He Said. Jesus in His ministry, He has this moment where He says, you've heard it said, but I say. As in like, there have been some rumors out there, but the way I see it, my Father, Jesus said, I only say what the Father says, I only do what the Father does. So when Jesus speaks, he's speaking from a father's perspective. He's representing the heavenlies. And so he says, you've heard it said in the way of the church, in the way of the world, in the way of society, in the way of social media, in the way of news reports, in the way of friends. You've heard it said, but I say, as in to say like, there is, a, there is an atmosphere in heaven that we sometimes miss by the rumors that are spread on earth. There is, a, there is a story that God is wanting to tell and invite us in on, and I'm inviting you in this morning. That, that Jesus, when he speaks, makes clear. And so Jesus speaks things. And so I wanted to do a series closing out this year, or at least as we start to look towards Christmas. Can you believe it's nearly Christmas? I'm excited. I don't get worried for the end of the year. It just gets more and more exciting. Who's with me? Three people. Awesome. Let's go. I also got to baptize my son in the first service, which is so good. And uh, oh man, that's just like as a dad, that's the dream, right? That your children would choose Jesus. He, he says, we, get, we give everyone a mic before they get baptized. We say, Joel, why are you getting baptized? He says, the world has good people, but Jesus is gooder. And he says, and I want to love Jesus forever. Like that's simple. And so just as John was encouraging you, like if today's your baptism day, that's what it is. You're realizing that he's the only one worthy and that I wanna follow him forever. And the waters of baptism are an outward display of an inward decision to follow him forever. So I got to baptize my son. I used my old t-shirt. I borrowed a baptism t-shirt. It's a size large, fits like a small. <laughs> so just a heads up if you get baptized, size up, all right? Let's go. John chapter three. The title of my message is Born Again. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you're a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the miraculous signs you're doing if God were not with him. Just a bit of context. Nicodemus is a teacher of Jewish law. He's a rabbinic teacher. He's a teacher of the Jewish law. He's, the, he's, a, he's a senior in the Jewish ruling council, council. Nicodemus is the guy. He's an operator. He's esteemed. He's respected in society. He's, he, he's by no means um, a nobody. Uh, Jesus does minister to nobodies, just like me and you. But Nicodemus is someone of status in society, and he comes to Jesus in the night, perhaps because he didn't want his friends to see him approaching Jesus. Perhaps there was some religious protocol that he didn't want to break. But perhaps also he just wanted a moment with Jesus because the crowds weren't there. Who knows? We have our different impressions of what was going on, but all we know is that Nicodemus is with Jesus, and it's just them. And I think one of our prayers as you come to church, it's a big crowd, but that you would sense that in a room full of faces, that you too can have a moment with Jesus. Uh, weekly, not just once, weekly. And so Nicodemus comes to Jesus and he's got some questions. He says, Jesus, no one could do the miraculous signs you're doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared the things he said. I'll tell you the truth, Nicodemus, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. Like just, just imagine this now. Nicodemus, a man, Jesus, a man. Encounter each other. He recognizes in Jesus miraculous signs and wonders and that he must be a teacher. Nicodemus is a teacher. Jesus is a teacher. He's a rabbi. And so they're having a very normal human conversation, but he recognizes this rabbi is different. He must come from God. And so Nicodemus has some thoughts that he wants to clarify. And Jesus' first words to Nicodemus, he reads it like a book. He says, Nicodemus, no one. It's almost like he knows what he wants. No one, Nicodemus, can see the kingdom of God unless he's been born again. The things he said. You've heard it said, there are many ways to enjoy what God has for your future. You've heard it said that multiple religions all lead to the same destination. You've heard it said that if you just visit church enough times, you've heard it said that if you read your Bible, you've heard it said that if you pray certain prayers, Jesus said, you cannot see the kingdom of God unless you're born again. The things he said. It's like in this interaction with Nicodemus, and some of you know the story, and I think what will happen today is for some of us, it'll be a reminder of the family that we were saved into, and it'll be a boost in our spirit to live the life of calling in God as a child. 
For others of us, it'll be a, an invitation to step into a new life, to be born again. I remember 21st of September, 2004, Stellenbosch University, gave my life to Jesus, I was born again. But what does that even mean? I think in the church world, um, some of the language of community speaks to the human soul. Language of friendship speaks to the human soul. Language of uh, perhaps there's more for your life speaks to us. You know, we have all these different things that we resonate with. When someone says, oh man, I was born again. Isn't it true that little flicker goes off? Oh my goodness, these Christian people, what are they talking about? Well, Jesus' first words to Nicodemus, you must be born again. That's what he said. He didn't discuss many other things. He just jumped straight into. Let's keep reading. How can a man be born when he's old? Nicodemus, flesh, carnal mind, like you and I. Weird Christian people and be born again. I like the church. I like the coffee. Dig the vibe. That new worship leader, Graydon, got some lungs like him too. I think, Tess, the truth is, if you ever stop leading worship, the church will lose. And so you just need to keep leading worship. You are the, Honestly, there is a roar when you lead. There is a grace on your life. There is an anointing in worship. I like all those things, but born again? Nah, nah, nah born again. No, this, this, this. That was what happened in the revivals. They speak about that stuff in those weird revivals when guys were falling all over the show. You remember that stuff? You've heard it said. Grandma talked about when this happened. Jesus said to Nicodemus, hey, buddy, if you want to see what my father sees, you must be born again. If, if you want to have my father's heart for your business, you must be born again. If you want to see your family with new eyes, you must be born again. What is it about this language? What is it about this thought? What is it about the thing Jesus said that perhaps he wants to remind us of again today? For some of us, we've said yes to Jesus. We've chosen a new life in faith and we need to remind ourselves we were born again. Therefore, we do not live in the way of old. We live in the way of new. For others of us, there's an invitation to you that there is a greater life for you and it's just here. It's, it's right. You just got to be born again. So Jesus goes on. They start to talk about it. Jesus answers, I'll tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he's born of water and of spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. Nicodemus, the wind blows wherever it pleases. One day your friend wants nothing to do with God. And the next thing you know, you're bumping into them in church, they're getting baptized, and you're like, hmm, what happened there? The wind blows wherever it pleases. I wanna invite you in this morning, just to lean in, to give God some permission to stretch the revelation that you have of this Christian faith to something far wider than you've ever imagined. It blows wherever it pleases. Gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised. The blizzard, the, you hear it sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. I asked my boy Joel a year ago, my boy, um, how do you feel about baptism? And he just looked at me with a blank face and I said, hey, one day mom and dad dream of baptizing you. You know, I was just kind of nudging him, pastor, hoping his kid gets it somewhere along the line. And, and he looked at me and said, I don't wanna get baptized, dad. I don't want to go in the pool. I don't want to get baptized. I don't like all those people staring at me. I said, okay, I'm going to leave it. You know, good dad, just leave it. Just don't push the issue, people. And so a year later, two weeks ago, we're driving in the car. Asia Barnard reminded me just now. We were driving in the car and he pops up. He says, hey, mom and dad, when's the next baptism service at Link Church? The wind blows wherever it pleases. And let me tell you, the wind is blowing in this house. I could feel it when we were worshiping. Spirit of God is here. And some of you are trying to make sense. Okay, if, if this message is for me and I make a decision today, how does it affect? Don't worry about that. The wind blows wherever it pleases and the new life God will give you comes with everything you need to live it out. And Joel says, Dad, I wanna get baptized. I said, awesome, my boy, we'll baptize you. You hear it sound, but you do not know where it's leading. And so it is with everybody born of the Spirit, Jesus says to Nicodemus. How can this be, he asked. How can this be? Nicodemus stands before Jesus at the, at the heart of, of what he may achieve in society. The knowledge of the Word of God. He's a teacher of the Old Testament, the Word of God, the Jewish Torah. He, 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 he is the guy. Jesus, something's missing. Jesus says, you must be born again, Nicodemus. You see, what you can't see now, you can only see if you're born of water and spirit, Nicodemus. You can't make sense of it by what you understand in the teachings of old. You have to get born again. And so Nicodemus is like, how can this be? It doesn't make sense, Jesus. 
I've got a dad, I've got a mom, I've got a story, I've got a brother, I've got a sister, I've got a society, I've got a family. Jesus said, I know all that. That's the natural order, but there is a higher one. I have a mom and dad, Mike and Cindy Yonach. They're awesome, I love them. I was born into a good family. I'm grateful for it. I've got three siblings, there are four of us. We've had an adventurous life, many things. Ups, downs, highs, lows, beautiful moments, hard moments. That's been the story of my natural life. But on the 21st of September, 2004, God overruled my biological order and he invited me into a different family. In John 1, it says, we're not born of human decision or of a father's will, but we're born of the Spirit of God. And if you're born of the Spirit of God, you have the right, it says, to be called the children of God. Tess and I own a property in Salt Rock. It exists as a pointed, surveyed property in Salt Rock. That's our earth. We have a house there. We live there. We enjoy being there. If somebody comes and makes their home on the corner of my property and they start to settle in on what is rightfully mine, you know what I do? I call up the legal system. I say, there's a squatter on my property over here. They shouldn't be there. And they come and evict them says you have the right to be called children of God. So if the devil comes and lies and, puts you, and starts to squat on your territory, that is you as a child of God, and starts to tell you that you have more that you have to do, that there's more that you have to prove, that there's more that you have to be, you just call up your heavenly father and say, God, there's someone squatting on the land that you gave me as a right. Kick them off. What Jesus was saying to Nicodemus is you have no right as a son of God until you're born again. Therefore, there could be many things squatting on the privilege of what I've entrusted to you and you can do nothing about it because you don't understand sonship. You must be born of water and of spirit. Let's talk about the water. In Ezekiel 36, I believe it is, it speaks about a cleansing of the water. I'm not sure if there's a scripture. It's just a reference. <laughs> That's all right. I'll just paraphrase. But you must be born of the water. It speaks about a cleansing in the water. It speaks about a water that cleanses us from the idols of old. It's a picture of the coming of Christ. Remember when Jesus was sitting at the well with the woman that had five husbands and now she was on her sixth one and she's like made the whole story up to Jesus and Jesus like, you know, asks her what she's doing. She's get water and he says, well, if you knew the water that you were talking to, you would be asking me for water. And she's like, but I'm at a well, who are you? And he says, I'm living water. If you drink from me, you'll never be thirsty again. This is the water Jesus is talking about to Nicodemus. You must be born of water. You must drink from a new well. You must reorientate your life to drink from a new well. You see, baptism in many ways is a picture of an old life dying and a new life being raised up in Christ, all right? It's just a physical picture of a spiritual promise. And Jesus is saying to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, you must be born of water. Yes, baptism is a part of it. Jesus himself was baptized, and so we follow that example. But in the, in the baptism is a picture of what our life should look like, a daily baptism in water, a daily drinking from the well that cleanses us from our impurities. We don't cleanse ourselves and then come to Jesus. Jesus cleanses us when we drink of him. Can I preach to some people that have got barriers between the life God has called you to and the life you currently live? For many of us, we live in our Christian life that he's the master, I'm the servant. It's not what God wants for you. He's your father, you're his son. And so he says, you must be born of water, Nicodemus. Repentance, let's talk about repentance. It's a, it's a simple word that in its essence means to, um, I'm going in this direction, I'm gonna turn from that direction, I'm gonna go in this direction, right? In the Old Testament, the word for repentance is a word, teshuva. Teshuvah. It's, it's made up of two Hebrew words. One is shuv and the other one is he. He is grace. Shuv is what a mom would say to her children that we're playing out in the park and it's home time, it's getting dark, they need to come and bath, eat and go to bed. And she would say, shuv, shuv. It was a call to come home. Shuva is a call to come home to grace. This is the Hebrew word for repentance in the Old Testament. So I'm walking in this direction. Jesus said, you must be born of water. You must be baptized. You must drink of a new well. And we think that means us getting it all right before God can do anything with our lives. He says, no, you must just return to grace. The water is to come to Jesus. Remember what Jesus said in the temple? 
He said, I'm the living water. If you drink of me, or he said, I'm the water of life, the well of life. If you drink of me, from you will flow streams of living water. You see, Nicodemus is coming to Jesus and saying, how do I make this story that I have better? And Jesus is going, you're seeing it all wrong, Nicodemus. You're seeing it from the outside in. I'm gonna help you see it from the inside out. You must be born again. What has got to get in on your heart and wash away the impurities of your soul that have actually restricted you from enjoying the fullness of God? You can't wash those impurities. I'll wash those impurities. So you come to me, you come to my word, you worship me with all your heart. You step into an atmosphere feel like this where the word is preached and it washes us and the water starts to flow from us. So yes, I was born again on the 21st of September 2004, but guess what? I'm in a process of continually being born again when I drink of the word and I feed and I drink from his well. And that's why we sometimes get to this moment where we think, but man, my life, my life's become static. My faith's become static. It's not working. You see, probably because just like Nicodemus, we've defaulted to the natural story. Dylan, son of Mike and Cindy, be accounting Stellenbosch, spreadsheet nut. And yet God is going, but I've called you to be an encourager of people. I've called you to light up the human soul. I've called you to be a father in your imperfections. I've called you to be a pioneer in the nation of Southern Africa. But God, I'm an accountant from Stellenbosch. Yeah, but you're a son of heaven. And you've got to keep reminding yourself, and this is what I need to say to some people in the room today as I preach born again. You think, that's for someone new in the room. They've never been to church and that's how you become a believer. No, this is for you. There's a washing that needs to happen in your heart today that's gonna cleanse the impurities that are stopping you from walking into the fullness of God. The renewing of our mind. In the New Testament, repentance is metanoia. The renewing of our minds. It speaks about a renewing of our minds, seeing it differently, understanding it differently, receiving it differently. I've always heard it said, but I say. I've always heard it said, but I say. And it's coming under the voice of our Father, amen? The second thing is the Spirit, the Spirit of God. In Romans chapter eight, we start to read of a life in the Spirit, a life in the Spirit. Listen to this. In Romans eight, verse five, if you're taking down notes, you can go and check this out in your quiet time. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set in what that nature desires. But those who live according with the Spirit of God or in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. Nicodemus, you have all the knowledge in the world, but your mind is set on what your natural mind desires. What you need, Nicodemus, is to drink from a new well so that from you will flow streams of living water and you need to have the Spirit of God impact your life so that your mind will be set by the Spirit. Nicodemus, you're so sharp, but you're not in step with the Spirit. You ever wondered why the bumper sticker doesn't work? Just a thought. You ever wondered why that like those three scriptures on your cupboard get really frustrating when you're having a hard season? You quoted them when the season was going up, but now it's a hard season. You're like, please take those off. I'm tired of this. I don't even know if I believe God anymore. I'm finding a new story. Because the mind is defaulting to a natural setting. I wanna tell you, friends, we live between these two worlds. I am human, I am man, I am natural, but I was born again on the inside into a spirit man and I gotta keep him alive, I gotta keep him stirred, I gotta keep him full of the things of God if God is going to be my source. He says, Nicodemus, you gotta be born of the water, my friend. You gotta drink from a new well and you gotta be born of the spirit. You let the Spirit of God, Nicodemus, come and be the driving force, the source of your life. Think of a child when they're born. I love perhaps the most, the most amazing moments of being a parent is when that child comes out of mom for the first time and they enter the real world and they have that first. <gasps> They've been sustained by a natural source for nine months, mom. And in a moment they shift. <sighs> and they breathe in a supernatural source. None of us came up with oxygen, friends. That's God's idea. And in a moment, this child transitions. They are born into this world. They're born into a natural world. They're attached to mom, a natural world. One of our children was born in water. It was scary. I got my friends here next door to me. We had this kind of similar experience. We shared notes across the wall. Who would have thought, Dubsy? But she was born, Mackenzie was born into water and the, and the midwife said to me, when she, when she gets born, it's the most beautiful experience. She's born into this water and then she's gonna just do a little kick and then she's gonna come out the water and she's gonna know exactly where to go to find mom. It's gonna be epic. Oh my goodness, if, if ever. <laughs> midwife said, 
your daughter's on the way. I was in the, in the kitchen washing dishes. I'm like, I'll just make sure the dishes are clean over here. Just make sure everyone have a nice cup of tea when it's over. Shout when it's good. She said, get you, Dylan, you're the dad. And I went and watched and my little daughter Mackenzie was born into water and I don't know if she kicked, but she knew exactly where to go. And she was underwater for at least a couple of seconds, feeding off mom. And then she came out and she sucked in oxygen. God is inviting us, friends, to leave, not leave, to trust that there is a biology higher than the one that you come from. To trust that your mom and dad are not the end result of your life, as good as they are, as bad as they are. That your siblings are not the key to your success. That the one who shook your hand and gave you a gap because they're dad's friend and they're part of a family story and all that kind of stuff and a friend, your friend that opened a door. I just want to tell you, friends, we're talking about a totally different Nicodemus. You must be born again, the things he said. And you must be born of water, Nicodemus. You've got to live a life of repentance, of turning to grace and renewing your mind so that you live a life that is taken from a new source and you must be born of spirit, Nicodemus. The Holy Spirit has to come and live and breathe in your lungs. Now again, if, if you have been in church for a long time, you remember that date you wrote down on the card when you gave your life to Jesus, when they had that word with you, when you followed the course, when you did your thing. Hey, today is maybe just an invitation to remind yourself, I haven't taken a breath for a little while. I haven't actually allowed God to purify me and have Him for a little while. I'm a pastor. I just wanna tell you, like disclosure, full disclosure to my friends online, I'm not perfect. And I wanna help, I wanna tell you something about you. I don't know you that well, but I know something about you. You're not perfect either. Your natural order fails. Your default DNA lets you down. It biases toward the natural. The flesh gives birth to the flesh and you bias toward idols and you bias toward selfish effort and you bias toward doing it in your own strength and you bias toward Nicodemus. Jesus, I got an issue. Nicodemus, you must be born again, my friend. You must bias toward the Spirit of God that breathes into you and the well of life that flows through you and the living waters that gush from you. My friend, there is an invitation to a higher life. Worship team, you can get ready to join me. We're gonna worship God with that song, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm fine. What next? Was blind. Who was blind? Nicodemus was blind, but he had eyes, but he couldn't see. I was blind, Lord. This heart didn't know what to do next. My soul craved a better day. I could see everything around me. I could see the beauty of my wife. I could see the, the incredible str structure and style. My, I love my children. I could see the, the colors of your creation. I, I got eyes, but I can't see. I was blind, but now I see. It's the story of Nicodemus, and it's an invitation to us. And maybe, maybe today, it's just an invitation for you to have your eyes opened again. But perhaps for some of us, it's an invitation to have your eyes opened for the first time. The last thing I wanna speak about is identity. You must be born of water, you must be born of spirit, and when you are Nicodemus, you will have a new identity. Jacob wrestled with God, he became Israel. Peter followed Jesus, or Simon followed Jesus, he became Peter. He's in the habit of renaming us into our new name. He's in the habit of helping us who knows what Nicodemus might have become if we followed the story. We don't know what happened with Nicodemus. We can't be sure he gave his life to Jesus. Some say he was at the resurrection. I'm not sure. I'm not, it's not entirely clear. All I know is he had an encounter with God, an opportunity to have a new life. And every time we walk into the walls of this church and every time we spend time with good friends that encourage the God story in our lives, we are reminded of an invitation to a new life, a born again life. In Romans chapter eight, it continues, life in the Spirit, and he says this in verse 14. He says, those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Servants of God? No, sons of God. Jesus in John 15, 15 says, I no longer call you servants. What was servant language? Old Testament language, law language. What was Nicodemus, a teacher of? The law. And Jesus is grace. And he's saying, Nicodemus, you need to be born into my family, the one of grace. You've taught law your whole life, Nicodemus. There is a higher power, it's grace. 
Because those who are born or led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Jesus, I no longer call you servants. For a servant does not understand his master's business. I call you friends. I met a young man at this Youth and Young Adults Conference, Seek First. He came to me and he said, hey, Dill, how do you manage your time with God, man? I just feel like time is so limited. Everyone wants a bit of my time. Everyone wants, everyone wants like a moment. Like, how do, you, how do you structure your day? I said, hey, just, just quick disclosure. I'm not like the, you know, wake up at five, do a quiet time until 5.15, you know, then eat breakfast until 5.30, take the two tablets, you know, do the gym. I'm not that guy. I'm run at the wall. If it falls, we'll figure out where to put the bricks. I'm that, you know, just a different approach. And so um, I said to him, hey, buddy, the difference between you and I is you've got a functional relationship with God. You, you're looking for the slot that he goes in. I said, I have a friendship with God. I'm standing with you right now and I'm communing with him. And he like looked at me. I said, have you read John 15, 15? He said, I think I have. I said, let me tell you what it says. He calls you friends. For everything the Father has made known to me, I've made known to you. Therefore, when I walk with Jesus, the secrets of heaven are flowing from my heart. I don't have to go and find them. I don't have to go and like prove myself to God. Nicodemus is looking in that way. And Jesus like, be born of the water and be born of the Spirit. And you'll have an identity that makes you a son. Sons know what their dad believes. That's freedom. When I baptized my boy this morning, as he walked into the waters of baptism, obviously my wife and I were so excited and it's like a family moment and he just wants to do this Jesus thing. And I looked him in the eyes and I spoke life of him and at no point was I thinking, all right, buddy, I'm gonna put you under this water. When you come up, you better live your best life for Jesus. Eh? When I pull you out of this water, Joel, you best show your friends that you know exactly how God works. You best model Christianity. You best say the right things. You best do the right things. No, I'm his dad. And I looked at the eyes of a young man that wants a bigger story and understands somewhere deep in his spirit. You can't make sense of being born again in the spirit. You must just trust it. It's not a carnal thing. It's a spirit thing. If God is calling you to trust him, do it. Trust him. Let us lead you. Let us guide you be baptized today and we trust the Spirit of God to come. You cannot make sense of that journey and your heavenly Father is not looking in the eyes and saying, all right, but when you do it, I'm expecting big things from you. No, he's just like me, looking into the eyes of Joel at a whole nother level going, my boy, I'm so proud that you're realizing there's a story bigger than this one. Those who live with the Spirit of God have the right, say right, to be called sons and daughters of God. But you must be born again. You can't play church. You can't, you can't, I'll try a little bit of this and I'll try a little bit of that and I'll add a bit of this and I'll listen to my one friend and I'll follow the star signs and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll read the, I don't know why I've got such a hang up on the star signs. I bring it up in almost every message I speak. You, 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 can't, you, 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 can't, you can't try live the life in the Spirit unless you're born again. You have to lay down all the carnal ways, every human effort to take you to a life that is beyond your own. Do you know every other God on this planet, every other religion on the planet served dead gods. It's the thing that sets the story of God apart, Christianity, Jesus. We serve a living God. And so when we give our lives to Him, the life of this living God gets in us and every dead and carnal thing gets laid at the foot of the cross so that the life of Christ, the born again man can rise. And I wanna say, church, there's a born again story for you. And some of it's just held up in, what will happen if I do that today? What might my spouse think? Some of you got children. I know the cry of a parent, a child that's walked away from God, a child that's making some poor decisions. I know the cry of a parent. I speak to many. It's hard. I want to tell you right now, the heavenly Father looks into their eyes far kinder than you do. He loves them far more than you do. And the same invitation that was presented to Nicodemus is being presented to them on a daily basis to be born again into the kingdom of God. And what you put on them will not help. Baptism is not a prescriptive thing. It's an empowering thing. You don't do this to prove your life to God. You do this to step into the life of God. Some of you need to get baptized today. And Jean made a joke. He said, take your wallet in, take your phone in, take your watch, but you need to know when you get baptized, you're not leaving the priorities of your finances and your own strength. 
You're not leaving the time that you love to manage in your own strength. You're actually saying, God, I want a born again life. I wanna live in the spirit. Let me just read the last part that we're gonna stand and we're gonna honor God and worship today. He says this, he says, those who have the spirit of God are the sons of God for you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear. Servant, master, how am I doing? But you received a spirit of sonship and by him we cry, Abba, Father. He says, the Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. And if we're His children, we're His heirs. Not if me, His children, if we, His children. Then we, His heirs. That means my win is your win. And your win is my win. And your hard day is my privilege to pick you up and my hard day is your privilege to pick me up. We're in the family of heaven with a Father who loves us, who's looking at us with kind eyes, not ranking us of whether we're serving Him well. We're His sons. He's looking in our eyes saying, you've got this. Stand with me, church. Maybe some of you just need to be reminded you were born again. You're not serving God with fear. You're His son. You're His daughter. And you live by faith. And I wanna speak to any fear that has crippled crippled you in this season, any fear that has crept in to just take you a little bit away from the life of the Spirit and take you back to, I guess this is always gonna be my story. No, when Jesus gets involved, there is a greater story. And I speak to the fear, God, in your people today. And I say that there is no fear in love. Perfect love will cast out fear. And in this room today, there is a perfect love. And it's like He's coming and He's throwing, He's evicting fear. Why? Because you're a son. You have the right to evict it because you're His son. And God, I thank You that You evict fear within marriages, that You evict fear within men and women in the marketplace, God, that You evict fear as our young people arrive in peer groups and there's people pressure and there's all these things and there's pleasing and there's comparison, that You evict fear, God, in Jesus' mighty name. Come and open your hands, church. When a son walks into his father's presence, a good dad embraces him. And the son has to learn to receive the embrace. And so maybe as a church today, we can just open our hearts, we can open our hands and we can say these words, Father, I receive you. Say it again, say, Father, I receive you. We receive your perfect love, Father. Father, we thank you that we receive the affection of heaven, the affirmation of heaven, the identity of a father who speaks to his children right now in this room, God. There is posture changing in this room, God. His fear must bow to the name of Jesus. And as the father starts to straighten up his sons and daughters and call them with a bold confidence into the throne room of heaven, he says, you should approach me with confidence into the throne room of heaven. Come to your father and receive this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said, everybody said.